Finally, HBO put out a teaser trailer for Game of Thrones' prequel, House of the Dragon, that will focus on one of the most destructive time periods for the Targaryens. A timestamp is given to us in the teaser, 200 years in the past, but we're looking at two different time periods for the show. Well, for the first season at least. Two timelines, 20 years apart, so there will be a lot of flashbacks. Similarly to Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon won't have a main character per se. It'll be a handful that share the spotlight. This character right here will be the Daenerys equivalent for the prequel. Daddy's ancestor, Rhaenyra Targaryen. She was born 200 years before the event of Game of Thrones takes place. But all the real action goes down when she's around the age of 30. Daemon Targaryen, her uncle, who happens to also be her husband, will be playing a very big role. Don't expect him to be anything like Jon Snow though. Think of something akin to Oberyn Martell. He has the nickname of the Rogue Prince, after all. And enough backstory was made about him to fill up an entire short story. Then there's the Valerion family, that caused everyone to lose their shit when the official photos of Corlys Valerion was put out by HBO a while back. House Valerion was completely omitted in Game of Thrones, but they are a powerful family with origins to Valyria, just like the Targaryens. They were never a Dragonlord family like the Targaryens, however. But since they both migrated here before their homeland blew up, they have shared a deep bond and an alliance, kept up through marriages between the houses. All these marriages mean, yes, some light-skinned Valerions will be dragon riders. Their ethnic characteristics were drastically changed for House of the Dragon to have some racial inclusivity. Valerians are written to be very pale with silvery gold hair and almost a godly beauty to them. So when you see people losing it over Corley's Valerion being black in the show, you know why. Not a lot is shown in this teaser trailer, probably because the show is still filming after all this time. Covid outbreaks and related delays on set affected them pretty hard, but there will be more dragons in this series than your eyes can follow, if they stay even somewhat on the course of the source material. What makes this time period so unique is that we're seeing multiple dragon riders going at each other full throttle. In most other times, it's just a dragon dominating a battlefield filled with just soldiers. There's only one other case in the lore where two dragon riders had an aerial battle, but that wasn't much of a fight. Valerion the Black Dread was many times larger than the newly born Quicksilver when he killed it a few generations before this war. This time period right here from 100 AC to 130 AC is the height of the Targaryen's power. The people on this continent finally accepted them as their rulers. Well, not quite the Dornish, but there was peace and prosperity. Until a fight between the family ended all that and there never will be a time period with this many dragons again. We get a nice close up of the ancestral Valyrian steel sword called Blackfire, being held by Rhaenyra's father and the King of the Seven Kingdoms when this prequel will begin. His name is Viserys Targaryen, and I'm sure we'll mostly be seeing him in flashbacks to Rhaenyra's youth. But there will be a lot more of this character right here, Alicent Hightower, who will be playing a role similar to what we see from Cersei Lannister, just not so villainous. She'll be bringing a whole new definition to evil stepmother. And Alicent's father, the character that's not fully revealed to us, is the man with the Hand of the Kingpin, Otto Hightower. A character who surprisingly gets a full close-up of her face is Mysteria. Strangely enough, I was just collecting codes involving this character for another video, but this teaser randomly dropped on us. So expect this Varys type character to be expanded upon then, with some more spoilers. But if they're showing her off this early into the marketing, Mysteria may play a larger role in the show than all the quick moments she's mentioned in supplementary books. She's not brought up even once so far in the main series books. The prequel will have to expand on a lot of George Martin's material, because a lot of what we get is just summaries of what went down during the Dance of the Dragons. That's what this war will be referred to as. A detailed summary, but still just a summary. It's going to be 10 episodes right off the bat for the first season, just like Game of Thrones. But I don't know how long they can stretch out this story. I think I read somewhere that 5 seasons was the goal, but you guys might have to correct me if I'm remembering wrong. That quick shot of attorney is new to me. The prominent sigil there belongs to House Tarly, who have their seat in the Reach. Rhaenyra did do some traveling there, but no prominent tourney took place at the Tarly Sea. The writers could have changed the location where Prince Daemon Targaryen fought the future Lord Commander of the Kingsguard in the tilts when they were younger, so that could be it. But one of the more exciting changes from Game of Thrones is the throne itself. It resembles the book's description a little more by being this dangerous pile of hideous melted down swords that can barely be used to sit on. 
Game of Thrones' a small chair looked comfy in comparison. The throne was supposedly made by Beleriand on the Black Dread with his dragon fire, and it's purposely made uncomfortable in order to keep a king seated here, never taking the responsibility lightly. Beleriand isn't around anymore. King Viserys was actually the last man to ride the old beast before it died due to old age. Beleriand lived for around 200 years, and there will be some dragons approaching this age and size. Dragons never stop growing if kept outside of captivity, leaving them free to eat as much as they want. The next trailer should show some, if the visual effects team has the footage they need. There's also the major antagonist missing from this teaser, Aegon II. So that's something to look forward to, along with some notable others. Did this build up your anticipation, or was not enough shown yet? I see a lot of people hyped about the dreams to make us King's Line, but just as many are not willing to give another adaptation a chance after the finale flop of Game of Thrones. I'm still optimistic because of how strong the source material is. Now back to working on a main video. See you guys then.